Leadership and Influence Processes by Kiana Williams. Leadership is defined as a process, the use of non-coercive influence to shape the group's or organization's goals, motivate behavior toward the achievement of those goals, and help define group or organizational culture. As a property, the set of characteristics attributed to individuals who are perceived to be leaders. Leaders is defined as people who can influence the behaviors of others without having to rely on force, those accepted by others as leaders. Power is the ability to affect the behavior of others. Managers and leaders should only exert power in ways that are appropriate and ethical according to the company or organization's rules and regulations. Legitimate power is granted through organizational hierarchy, authority, such as managers or supervisors. Reward is the power to give or withhold rewards. Rewards can include bonuses or promotions. Coercive is the power to force compliance by means of psychological, emotional, or physical threat. This could be withholding something or written reprimands or anything in that nature. Referent power is the personal power that occurs to someone based on identification, imitation, loyalty, or charisma. And expert power is the personal power that occurs to someone based on the information or expertise that they possess, such as any information that anyone else would need to know that they don't know. Generic or Universal Approaches to Leadership Generic approaches to leadership assume that there is one set of answers concerning leadership. One approach focuses on traits, while the other concentrates on behaviors. Researchers assume that some basic traits or set of traits existed in leaders and were not in non-leaders. It was believed that by identifying and defining these traits, they could also identify potential leaders earlier than they would have been able to before. Examples of those traits include intelligence, assertiveness, extensive vocabulary, and self-confidence. Behaviors. Behavioral theory tries to describe leadership by a person's actions rather than their traits. The thinking behind this theory is that effective leaders behave differently than less effective leaders. A study conducted in the 1940s by Michigan State suggested that there were two forms of leadership behaviors job-centered and employee-centered. Job-centered behaviors were more interested in work performance and production, while employee-centered ensure that employees are satisfied with their job and content as a work family. Another study conducted in the 1940s by Ohio State suggested that there were two forms of leadership behaviors as well, initiating structure and consideration. Initiating structure is the behavior of leaders who define the leader's subordinate role so that everyone knows what to expect, establish formal lines with subordinates. Consideration is the behavior of leaders who show concern for subordinates an attempt to establish a warm, friendly, and supportive climate.
Managerial Grid provides a means for evaluating leadership styles and then training employees to move towards an ideal style of behavior. The horizontal axis is the concern for production, similar to job-centered and initiate and structure behaviors. The vertical axis is concern for people, similar to employee-centered and consideration behaviors. The LPC or Least Preferred Coworker Theory suggests that there is no one best style of leadership. It also suggests that a leader's effectiveness is based on the situation at hand. The LPC measure quiz measures leadership styles by the means of a 16 question questionnaire. A high score on the questionnaire suggests a relationship oriented score or a low score is task oriented. The path goal theory suggests that the primary functions of a leader are to make valued or desired rewards available in the workplace and to clarify for the subordinate the kinds of behaviors that will lead to those rewards. There are four leader behaviors. Directive or instrumental lets subordinates know what is expected of them. Supportive is very friendly and approachable. Participative, consulting with the subordinates, soliciting suggestions and allowing participation in decision making, and achievement oriented, setting challenging goals and encouraging to subordinates. Vroom's decision tree approach predicts what kinds of situations call for different degrees of group participation. It also assumes that the degree that which a subordinate participates in decision making depends on the characteristics of the situation. The LMX approach stresses that leaders have different kinds of relationships with different subordinates. Not one type of relationship can define or relate to another relationship. It is important for all leaders to have separate and individual relationships with their subordinates. There are new and emerging approaches to leadership every day. Strategic leadership is the capability to understand the complexities of both the organization and its environment and to lead change in the organization to achieve and maintain a superior alignment between the organization and its environment. Cross-cultural leadership in today's international organizations require leaders who can adjust to different environments and quickly work with partners and employees of other cultures and religions. Ethical leadership is directed by respect for ethical beliefs and values and for the dignity and rights of others. And this is my PowerPoint presentation, the end.